welcome to this video on bubble sorting GCSE computer science now first of all computers sort things into order all the time here's a set of integers they're in the wrong order you might want to for example find the biggest number we can just as a human being see it by going like that but actually computers can't just go well it's that one they would have to compare them one at a time swap them around until the list's in order and then find the number that's at the end of the list and that is an algorithm that is necessary if you're writing some, let's say, some Python code to find the biggest number here. You sort numbers um, all the time when you make a computer program. For example, trying to find out who's winning a game, trying to find out the nearest restaurant on Just Eat, trying to work out who's got the most merits uh, in school, that sort of thing would involve a list of students, a list of numbers, put them in order, find, find the most. So it's definitely something one, that we would want to do a lot and two, we want to do efficiently. Now, bubble sort is one particular technique for doing this. And it'll, the reason it's called bubble sort, hopefully it will become clear when I go through the first example. And the problems with bubble sort is not how to do it, it's how to write down um, the answer in such a way that you can keep track of what's going on. And what you're supposed to do really is compare one pair of numbers one at a time. Do we need to swap them over? Are they in the right order? 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 And when you get to the end, that's known as a pass. You've gone all the way through the data. You've passed all the way through the numbers. And then you start again and pass through the data repeatedly until you've got the numbers in order. So start at the beginning. Do we need to swap them over? Well, they're in order, so no. Do we need to swap these over? Well, they are not in the right order. So yes, we need to swap them over. So we'd end up with so far two, three. Now, five is going to go here potentially, but it would depend on what was here. If this number was, like, say, smaller than 5, we have to swap those over as well. But actually, 5 can go next because 5 and 8 are uh, in the right order. So the next swap I'm on now is 8 and 1. Do I need to swap them over? And the answer is yes, of course. So I end up there. And that's the end of pass 1. Done. Pass 1. Now, you don't write this down in the exam, but it's just a record for this video. So I understand that I've passed through the data once. And at the end, I'm going to ask the question, how many passes were there? And it means how many times have I passed through the data in order to sort it out? And I noticed so far that one was here, and it's now here. Now, what will happen is one will then move to here on the next pass, and it will bubble along. And you end up with one, in quotes, bubbling to the front of the list. That's why it's called bubble sort. Let's start again. Do they need to swap over? No. Do they need to swap over? No. Do they need to swap over? Yes. Now you end up with no. Yes. Like that when you do that. Do they need to swap over? No. Do they need to swap over? No. Three is small than five. Do they need to swap over? Yes. And then do they need to swap over? Well, it would, be five, it would be five and eight. No. So that's the end of pass two. Just keep track of that. I'm keeping uh, a count. It's just going to be the number of rows in my table when I'm finished. Look how one has bubbled into the middle now. Two was uh, at the beginning all the time, but three was here and has bubbled into the correct position. Bubbling meaning sort of moving along one step at a time as we pass through the data. Next, let's keep going. One important thing is when to stop. How do you know when you're finished? And a human being would just know immediately, just glance at the numbers, they're in order, the end. But actually a computer needs to sort of say, are they, are they, do they need to swap, do they need to swap, do they need to swap? And there's a way a computer could decide if and when to stop sorting, and I'll tell you when we get to that point. Do they need to swap? No. Two or three? No, they don't. Now it's three and one. Do they need to swap? Yes, they do. So I've got three here now. Three and five, do they need to swap? No. Five and eight, do they need to swap? No. So that's past three, finished. Do they need to swap? This is the next pass. Yes, they do. Two and three, no. Three and five, do they need to swap? No. Five and eight, do they need to swap? No. And I've ended up with one, two, three, five, eight. Now at this point, that is the end of pass four. A computer does not know it's finished. A human does because they do another secret pass in their mind. They would just go one, two, three, five, eight, done. That is technically a pass. So a computer goes like this. Do we need to swap? No. 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 So actually, that final pass is 
important. And this is the defining characteristic of how to know when to stop. It's when there are no swaps in a pass. When you go through and say swap, no, 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 it means the numbers are in order. If there are no swaps in a pass, then it's time to stop. So that's the bubble sort algorithm. If you want to see why it's called that, the one bubbles closer to the front of the list through each pass. There are five passes in total uh, when working with those numbers. Now, it depends what numbers you start off with as to how many passes are required. Let me, for example, do a second, a second sorting process and see if I can have a different number of passes rather than five. Uh, two, one, three, five, four. Now this time, the one is closer to the front anyway. Four is near its final position. Three looks like it's already where it should be. So I can't imagine there's going to be many passes required here. Start at the beginning. We need to swap them. Yes, we do. Just like this. One. I've got two. Two and a three. They're fine. Three and five. They don't need swapping. Five and four. They do. One, two, three, four, five. Human beings know they're in order. Computers don't. Do they need to swap? No, 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 no. No swaps required. Write it down. That's two passes. So actually the minimum number of passes to sort an unordered list is two. One pass to do the original swapping and a final checking pass just to make sure the numbers are in order. The minimum number of passes this algorithm can ever do is one and that's where you give it a list of numbers that are in order to start off with and uh, it will just pass through no swaps required and stop so you can do no one pass if they're in order or two passes if they're not uh, and then any number of passes really um, if, it, if the list requires more but as I've said it two two minimum for uh, an unordered list such as this now a couple of things to point out Human beings can see the order immediately. We do have an algorithm in our head that we're using, but some people find it difficult to even express what it is they're doing. They just know how to do it. Computers can't work that way, so they need a very specific set of procedures in order to sort, uh, sort these things. If I asked you to write this in Python, and I gave you a list of numbers and said you can only write if statements and for loops and so on, I think at that point you would see the complexity of trying to write a sorting routine. It's not certainly in the case you can just sort of say it in quotes, I can see the answer. If you were to write the answer in the exam, such as this here, without any working out, you know, the, the exam question is not, can you put these numbers in order? It's, can you demonstrate the sequence of steps required to sort the numbers using the bubble sort algorithm? Uh, so you just score a straight zero if you write the numbers in order, whereas you'll score marks for each row of your table if you uh, are sorting them correctly, this could easily be a sort of a four, five, six mark question. Uh, it hasn't come up on the new specification yet, but if it does, um, you'll see it will be worth quite a number of marks. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'm well aware that if it's the first time you've seen this, it might be, you know, there's a lot to take on. There's a very specific way of doing things and, and it takes time to get good at this. But uh, if you want to look at the worksheets that go with this lesson, uh, work your way through them, hopefully you will... Um, find this process straightforward in exam conditions and one last a closing point here is i'm going to call this the short table you may see uh, in the classroom that i demonstrate a, a slightly longer way to write the working out down where i show each swap one at a time and that can be used to demonstrate um, how the algorithm works in more detail but really in the gcse exam you don't have enough rows in the table to do that so you end up with just doing one row per pass Pass one, pass two, pass three, like this. And so if you do see me in the classroom talking about the long table, that's just to try and help students understand the process. It's really this short table that you would be uh, writing down in the exam. Hope you find that helpful. Look out for other videos uh, on uh, sorting in general, including uh, another video on merge sort, which is a different algorithm um, that, you, uh, that you need to master as well uh, for paper one.